Irish actor Killian Murphy plays gang leader and businessman Tommy Shelby in the BBC TV series Peaky Blinders. A TV series which follows the exploits of a criminal gang of the same name based in Small Heath, Birmingham just after the First World War in 1919. But that was just acting. Now this story charts all about the history behind what the real gang actually did during the 19th century when they were first discovered. Who were the real members and what really made them so dangerous and caused them coin their iconic chilling nickname. No fake blood, no stuntmen, no makeup this time. This film will give you an insight into one of the most notorious gangs ever in British history and highlight what life was like in the city of Birmingham back in the 19th century. Join us now as we find out on who were the real Peaky Blinders. The Peaky Blinders, dubbed as the Hooligans of Birmingham, were a criminal gang based in Small Heath, Birmingham, England in the late 1890s. The name of the Peaky Blinders wasn't used until 1890. According to local historian, chair of Birmingham Community History and teacher from the University of Birmingham, Professor Carl Chin, he suggested on how the name of the gang came from as he thought that members of the gang used to sew razor blades into the peaks of their flat caps and use them as weapons by slashing their victims from a visual angle across either the forehead, cheeks or eyes while the blood from the cuts would pour down and blind them temporarily. However, this was deemed to be a myth and as an unrealistic scenario as razor blades were just beginning to be used during the 1890s and they were known and to be a luxury item and were deemed too expensive for the gang members to use them. Also, there was no genuine evidence or information to support the predicted name of the real gang at that time. However, Carl believed that a more mundane explanation into where the name of the Peaky Blinders came from was that working class men from Birmingham and other major towns and cities used to commonly wear flat and short peak caps during the 1880s. People nicknamed these people as Peakies as it was a common nickname for the then popular flat caps with peaks at the front. Philip Goodison, author of the book The Gangs of Birmingham, stated that the Peaky Blinders originated as a specific gang, but the term and name later became a generic label. From as early as the 1870s, inner city Birmingham streets were filled with overcrowded slums and extreme poverty with the lure of crime was a pull for some. It soon led to an eruption of gangs and violence across the city. An earlier gang known as the Cheapside Sloggers had evolved in the 1870s, and the term sloggers, meaning fighters, had already became a generic local label for street gangs where the Peaky Blinders emerged at the end of the 19th century in Adley Street, which was in the Bordsley and Small Heath areas which was an extremely depraved slum section of Birmingham at the time. Battles to own areas in Small Heath and Cheapside broke out. These saw hundreds of youths fighting, sometimes to the death, in mass brawls that lasted for hours. The city of Birmingham was in fact on the edge of the Industrial Revolution during the 19th century when the Peaky Blinders were first discovered. The city was one of the world's most important manufacturing hubs, but it became almost like a mafia-run city when there was sex and violence going on in every street on every single day. On Saturday the 23rd of March 1890, 
A 21-year-old innocent young man named George Eastwood was in a pub called The Rainbow on Aidley Street. He went to order a ginger beer rather than an ale. This inappropriate act led him to be a target for a gang. And when he went to go home, he was violently assaulted by the gang members using metal belt buckles. He had only gone a few yards and it was just under the blue brick railway arches when gang member Thomas Mucklow struck him with a violent blow with a belt buckle. George fell down and it was supposed that his head struck the pavement with the result that his skull was fractured. While he was on the ground, he was kicked and hit with another belt buckle by one of Mucklow's cowardly mates. Somehow George managed to get to his feet and while chased by the gang, he ran to his left down Lower Trinity Street. He would have been in fear of his life, and with the strength of someone fighting to survive, he clambered up a wall of Alcock Street School and crossed the playground into Alcock Street itself. Desperate for safety, George had banged on the door of a house of a Mr. Turner who kindly gave refuge to the poor man despite the threat of Mucklow and his gang friends who were shouting for him from outside. Later that night, George Eastwood was taken in in a dangerous condition to the Queen's Hospital in Bath Row. In addition to his seriously bodily constitutions, his head was fractured and his scalp was cut in two or three places. The attack on George Eastwood by a gang was so vicious that the Birmingham Daily Post newspaper condemned it as a murderous assault. The innocent was reported locally but there was no mention of the name of the gang. However, a few days later, in the number of national publications, including one from the City of London, they had reported that a letter had been sent to the Birmingham Press newspaper stating that the attack had been carried out by the Small Heath Peaky Blinders. And that was the, when the gang was first known to be referred to as the Peaky Blinders by the local residents in the City of Birmingham and overall the general public of England. The Peaky Blinders were mostly well known for its notable members that were part of the main foundation to the criminal gang. Unbelievably, members of the Peaky Blinders could join from as young as the age of 13, like David Taylor, for when he became 13 years old became a member of the gang. He was also deemed to be the youngest ever member of the Peaky Blinders. But the most well-known gang members were four other men who were Harry Babyface Fowler, Ernest Bales, Stephen Mahickey and Thomas Gilbert. Harry Fowler, nicknamed Babyface because of his young appearance, was born in 1885 and was 19 years old when he first joined the gang. Ernest Bales also was born in 1885 and was also 19 years old when he became a gang member. Stephen Mahickey was born in 1879 and was 24 years old when he became part of the gang. And Thomas Gilbert was born in 1866 and being significantly older than the other members listed on the record, he was 34 years old when he became a gang member of the Peaky Blinders. The gang were well known to have a distinctive clothing style, wearing donkey jackets and having donkey fringe haircuts, silk scarves or cravats, bell-bottom trousers, steel cap toe boots, and with either a distinctive flat or peak cap, while a line of brass buttons down the front of their waistcoats gave added distinction to the overall appearance of the gang members. Their style of dress was similar to that of the Manchester-based gangs of the same period known as Scuttlers. The Peaky Blinders were known for their criminal activities such as making money from illegal bookmaking, protection rackets, the black market, stealing and selling alcohol, drug trafficking, attacking other rival gangs and innocent bystanders, and also assaulting the police. The gang members fought with an array of weapons such as belt buckles, fire irons, knives, 
handkerchiefs filled with stones wrapped up and then thrown to harm other people, as well as revolvers, glass bottles and bricks. The city of Birmingham did have a Northern Irish police chief. His name was Sir Charles Horton Rafter, who came from Belfast. He came to Birmingham in July 1899 and recruited a lot of Irish policemen, but not Protestants from Belfast. Charles himself was a very strong man, and he became Chief Constable of the Birmingham City Police after serving as a member of the Royal Irish Constabulary for 16 years. With him in charge, it was agreed that he was responsible for removing the threat of the Peaky Blinders, which in fact he did within a few years. By the early 1900s, the Peaky Blinders had disappeared. On the 5th of August 1904, both Harry Fowler and Ernest Bale stole a bike from an innocent bystander, Ralph Euster, after he left it outside a factory in Henrietta Street for just four minutes. They were then caught later trying to sell the bike. They were then both charged for bike theft. Fowler was sentenced to one month in prison for the offence, while Bales received two months in prison for the theft. Thomas Gilbert was charged for his crimes of false pretenses on the 18th of October the same year, perhaps suggesting that he was not involved with the more physical crimes like the other gang members were and Stephen Mahickey was charged from breaking into a draper's shop, which was just 11 doors from his own home, on the 24th of October, stealing six pounds worth of stock, and when he told the court in mitigation, he said he was trying to feed his wife and two young children. For his crime, as police records stated, he received eight months behind bars. The reasons why the gang had disappeared was that there was better policing by the Birmingham City Police, which Charles Horton Rafter was probably responsible for establishing when he came to Birmingham. Stronger prison sentences had also been introduced and were used when people were arrested for violence and criminal activities. The city of Birmingham had a major change in social conditions as more and more people had grown up, been to school and had self-discipline instilled in them as schooling didn't come compulsory until the early 1880s. Furthermore, in many poor areas, socially minded vicars, particularly from High Church of England parishes, had especially set up youth clubs and boxing clubs to increase self-discipline and self-respect, which had an impact and contributed to the decline of gang warfare in Birmingham, London and Manchester in the early 20th century. The Peaky Blinders have become one of the most notorious gangs ever to be mentioned in British history. Even a TV series that has been made that following the exploits of the gang of the same name written by Stephen Knight and starring Irish actor Killian Murphy has had a positive reception, suggesting that a lot of people want to know a lot more about Birmingham, its dark gang history, and to see and hear from people from Birmingham about the city, as well as people from the West Midlands as a whole. The Peaky Blinders series has been celebrated for its stylish cinematography and charismatic performances, as well as for its casting an eye over a part of Britain and British history that have been very rarely explored on television. Most of the once feared names of the gang members and the gang of the Peaky Blinders as a whole are now both forgotten, but their reputations are still cemented in the city of Birmingham's folklore and will always be remembered as they weren't men and a gang to be respected. They were men and a gang to be looked down upon for how they both treated innocent people and young women in the late 19th century.
Remember, if you're interested in learning more about the Peaky Blinders, the first and second series of Peaky Blinders are both available to buy from BBC DVD. And the book of the real Peaky Blinders by Carl Chin is available from all good bookstores and Amazon.co.uk.